Okay, welcome to this uh, PHP Basics tutorial on functions. Um, in this video, we're going to talk very briefly about, well, functions. Um, I imagine it'll be quite short, probably less than five minutes, although I have said that before. Um, so, yeah, functions. Um, PHP has around 5,200 and something inbuilt functions that you can use without having to define them. For example, the string length function re, uh, gets the length of a string. So say if we had a variable string, just equal to I am a string, uh, we could get the length of this string, length equals length string, like so, except it's spelled string right. Um, so the string length function will return uh, the length of this string as a number. So if we just did echo length, like so, just reload our page, see we get 14, and that's just because there are 14 characters in this string. Um, there is also the str split function, um, which will convert the string to an array, um, so that will be a value, each character basically is a value. Uh, just demonstrate that by... Um, yeah, length just hit reload, you see we get an array of each character. If I just view the page source, oops, oh dear, okay, good. You see we get I am a tab string, full stop, um, in an array, so that's another function. Um, you can also define your own functions, so say if you wanted one that would encrypt a password before you stored it in a database, you could define like an encrypt function using the function keyword and then encrypt. Uh, you can define it to take one parameter, which is the string, and then you want it to do something with that string. So say you wanted to string first reverse the string. So we have string. Oops. String. Um, and then make a base 64 encoded version of it. Base 64 encode string and then convert it to an MD5. MD5 string. Cal I should say calculate the MD5 hash of it. Um, at this point, we will have these three functions applied in this order to this string. So then we could, for example, echo string. And then if I down here now do um, encrypt, wait, why, pt, good, encrypt string, Let's hit reload, you see we get this random uh, encoded, encrypted version of the string. Um, so yeah, that's how sort of functions work. You can define them like this and call them just like any other function. Um, although obviously just echoing something with a function isn't very useful. It makes more sense to return it using the return keyword. Um, that means that we can use it directly in our other sort of script. So same output obviously, but you could define this like encrypted string or something and then you could insert the variable enc into a database instead of just having it output so it's a bit more flexible if you do it this way. But we're just going to stick with echo for now. Okay, so that is pretty much all there is to say about defining functions. Um, oh, uh, I'll just talk about briefly optional parameters. Um, say you wanted to make the... Uh, well, say you want to give the user an option between creating an MD5 or a SHA1 hash. You could... Um, Define a ver define define an optional parameter like use sha1, uh, and the way you do that is you give it a default value in the list of parameters. So you use sha1 equals false, um, and that makes this parameter optional. So you can um, well if I if I just call this like refresh now we get no difference. Um, but if say if say if the parameter wasn't optional like the first one wasn't, we get an error. Say it, say it tells you you're missing argument one, blah blah blah, and things like that so yeah uh, right back to there um, 
So that's how you make optional parameters. If you wanted to make it use an SHA1, if that was equal to true, you would just use an if statement. If um, if use SHA1 equals true, else use the MD5 string string equals SHA1 string. So now if we just reload this, you see we get the same MD5 because we haven't specified this other variable, but if we specify that as true, just hit reload, you see we get the SHA1 hash version of that string. And I have just gone over five minutes, so I will I will make a video that's short one day, honest. Um, anyway, so what we were talking about here is optional parameters, which you do like that. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is variable scope. Say if we defined a variable salt equals I am a salt. Um, if you don't know what this is, it's something you, you, so you usually add to the end or beginning of a password when you encode it for the database. It makes it harder for people to get to the original password if they somehow get the encrypted version. So yeah, that's what that's for. But say now if we wanted to uh, first reverse the string like here and then add on the salt to the end of the string here. We can't just do that. If, if I now reload the page, you see we get this undefined variable salt. Um, the reason this is is because inside the function there's a different sort of variable scope. So inside the function you can't directly access any of the um, variables outside of the function, if that makes sense. Um, you can define them inside by doing global and then a list of salt, salt a list of variables so now if I reload this you see it works obviously a different hash because that's why we added the salt um, so yeah that's one way you can get to global variables um, the other way is using the globals array uh, if I just quickly at the bottom here do print underscore uh, globals Oops. Just hit reload, ignore that error, Let's view this page source, you see we get a huge array, um, the globals array contains all of the arrays, that, all of the arrays, all of the variables that are in the global scope, and itself is a super global. A super global is a variable that is by default set as global inside a function basically, so you can use it anywhere in your script. Uh, examples are get post cookie globals, which shows here as recursion, because that's itself. Um, anyway, we're not going to worry. Well, we can worry about them. Um, these are the variables that are global, super global. Server. So this server here is the same, or this files and get is the same as um, same as underscore files. You could also use um, globals files. No reason to just sort of quirk of how it works I guess. Uh, so anyway, uh, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. You see we have our salt as a key and string as well. So any variable that we define will show up here after this list of predefined ones. Okay, so we could also use the globals array here. Instead of defining it as global, we would do that by doing globals salt like so. Uh, if I just reload this, you see we don't get any error, and we get the same hash as we did when we used the global keyword. Um, just if you're just quickly out of um, sort of point of interest, maybe um, what the global keyword does is it assigns the variable by reference to its key, the, the value in the globals array. So basically, when you do uh, global salt. What you're actually doing is salt um, yeah, that's right. Salt equals globals salt. Um, it's sort of a shorthand, nicer syntax for that. So yeah, that's what you're actually doing. If you don't know what assigning by reference is, um, I suppose I could just briefly mention it here because I'm not going to make a video on just that. 
um, assigning by reference is like say if you had the variable bar equals uh, test and then you did other no let's say bar equals var um, now var now bar would be equal to test as well but it wouldn't um, it wouldn't be the same. It's not the same actual value. It's a it's a sort of duplicate of this variable. Um, if you if assigned it by reference, uh, it just assigns the reference. So bar and var both point to this same value. I imagine that didn't make much sense, but you can read up on it a bit. I guess it's not particularly something we come across very often. So, yep. Uh, so yeah, uh, personally, I prefer to use the globals array. I don't really know why. Um, I just find it a little bit neater. I did that last time. Um, you don't have to have a big list of. You don't have to have an extra two lines at the top of your function. You can just use this globals array directly. Um, same thing happens. So, yep, that's pretty much it for functions and user defined functions. Well, we talked about optional parameters, the globals array, global variables variable scope returning yeah I think we've covered quite a lot so that's good um, okay thanks for watching and hopefully the audio wasn't too bad